and a very good evening uh, for those of you who are returning from the last tutorial welcome back and for those of you who are new to this tutorial series my name is Braden Rant from Second Life and this is a tutorial for Blender 101 uh, if you'd like to catch up on the last tutorial uh, this will bring you up to this stage if not what we'll be doing today is we'll be copy uh, we'll be dealing with a lot of uh, the more complicated uh, tools uh, within Blender uh, outside of the ones we highlighted in the first tutorial. So first thing we'll notice is we've still got our cube and uh, in the middle of a cube is something that's called the origin and the origin applies to every mesh that you create will have a origin of some description. So what we'll do is we'll show you the origin. Now if we try to rotate this uh, box as you can see it will rotate quite happily around its center origin point now if we go into edit mode and we move that box slightly to the side right, and then we try and rotate you'll see it still rotates around the origin however the origin is not in the center of the object anymore now if you uh, if you make an object and go into edit mode it can get, it can get quite lost as to where the origin might be what you can do, uh, you can obviously return the item back to where it was manually, uh, but what you can do is go to Object, Transform, and then you can go Geometry to Object, like so. Right. If, however, you wish the uh, origin to be where the object is, you can still go to Object, Transform, and this time, rather than Geometry to Object, you go origin to geometry and that will take your your center point for your mesh item right to uh, to where your the the mesh is so let's just put that back in the middle so we've got a starting point now at the present moment we've got our cube and as you can see our cube has only eight vertices as you can see at the top of the screen we have eight and what that actually means is you have one two three four and on the underside five six seven eight the average vertice, what it really is, is a change of direction from the flow of your edges. Right, so anything that doesn't require a change of direction ultimately can just be one face. So if you're making a building and it's got a wall, unless you've got really any detail in that wall, you can leave it as a single face and only really put uh, any geometry where you may need a window or a door. Or, or anything else that will keep your uh, your vertice count down quite heavily uh, but for this instance because we're not specializing in clothing or uh, or any particular object at the present moment we're really just going over the tools we'll go over those such things at a later date so the first thing I want to show you uh, is when you have your box well, first of all, we can deselect it. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, there's not an awful, not an awful lot you can do with a box, uh, which is a fair comment. So what we can do is we have two ways of increasing the geometry in, uh, in Blender. And the first thing we can do is we can subdivide the item. So what we'll do is uh, we can go to W, and then we can press subdivide. But it would actually help if we actually had something to subdivide there. So we'll go back again, press W, and we'll subdivide. And as you can see, it's first of all, it's subdivided it with one cut, which means there's one cut on every face, which makes the uh, vertice count go up to 26. But we can increase that substantially uh, up, to, up to 10 cuts. Now, there's not an awful lot at this stage that you could make a cube that has a 728 vertice count. Uh, just remember for every face that you create in Blender, uh, Second Life will see two, uh, mainly because Second Life handles uh, works in triangles, so a single square quad in Blender is two triangles in Second Life. So bear that in mind when you're making your items, so try and keep your, uh, your vertice count into a, a realistic amount. So we don't need that many cuts, uh, so we'll, we'll take that down. Uh, and let's just for the sake of it, let's just say there's three cuts. Right, so we'll, we'll accept that, right, and there it is. Now, 
the thing is with Blender is at this present moment you can still edit the number of cuts, the smoothness uh, and so on and so forth. The minute you go into object mode and then back into edit mode, you can no longer edit those cuts. So if you've done too many and you've already gone out and you've gone back in again and you're thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? What you can do is you can go in and select by Alt and left clicking on one row like so and then when you press the X button you can delete an edge loop now as you can see that's really removed the edge loop so we'll get rid of those we'll make it nice and simple right and as you can see we've now moved that edge flow uh, back to being only four faces, well, yeah, four face, sub faces per face. Now, if we wished to add a uh, another row, we can call upon something called a loop cut. Now, a loop cut uh, will just really do exactly what it says on the tin. It will cut a loop around an item. Now, that is Control R, right? And then we'll get this pink line. This pink line is, is sort of a, uh, it's a prerequisite as to where you would like the cut to be. So on this instance, we want the cut to be there. You can use the mouse wheel to say whether you want two or three or f what, whatever you want. But it starts off as one, so you, you can click it with the left mouse button, and then it's still not set. You can still move it within the confines of those faces. So you can put it anywhere on there. So for this instance, we'll just put it in the middle. So there we now have a loop cut. And uh, again, if you want to remove that loop cut, it's the same thing. You can highlight it, go to delete, and delete the loop. Right, so that will give you uh, a very basic box still. Now, what happens if we want to actually uh, move on from that? Well... Let's say, for example, we had this uh, this nice box and we wanted to do something with it. Uh, I'm not really sure what we could do with it at the present moment, but let's let's see what if there's anything that's uh, that's doable. So, if we had, for example, uh, this box and we wanted to, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's just do some extrusions and we'll, we'll go from there. So, first of all, what we can do is if we select a face right we can uh, go to face select as you can see we've selected the face there and we can actually extrude now judging from what i've said about uh, the previous command instructions surprisingly extrude is e so we extrude and we can draw it out from there right now what we can do from that is uh, we can not only extrude faces, we can actually extrude edges. So if we go to edge select, select an edge, and we can extrude that. So there we go, there's another uh, face that's sticking it. And not only can we uh, extrude faces, we can actually, sorry, edges, we can actually extrude the vertices themselves. So we can go to a vertice select mode, and we'll select that vertice there. We'll go for a head on view. And we'll extrude it like so. Now, as you can see, there's not really much call for an edge on its own. So what we can do is we can turn that into a face by selecting one, two, three, four of the vertices. And then for, to create a face is the uh, keyboard shortcut F. So as you can see, we've now created a face. In that box area and uh, and we can add as many as we like by doing that uh, but if we get to a point where we uh, we want to do something that's a little bit different we can actually tear a, a vertice apart from another vertice so for example if I get this one here you can tear it by using the keyboard shortcut V so we press V and we've now torn that off its previous vertice Right, so there is instances, of course, where this would come in quite useful, uh, especially when you want to do loop cuts and you need to put in some more geometry. Uh, but for the most part, 
it's there if you want it. I'm sure you'll find a reason to use it at some point. But if you do end up where they become split, you can select both items. You can then do Alt and M, and then you can connect them back together again. For instance, like this one, I'll put at center. Uh, the various different ones are, uh, obviously, if we do them both, right? we can go at the last one. Right? Or alternatively, we can go at the first one. Or again, like I say, we can go at a centre. We can also put them together at cursor if you want them to go in a specific place. Right, so that's just covered uh, the loop cuts and extruding faces, edges and vertices, tearing and joining faces. The last thing today is for today's tutorial is we'll be highlighting the mesh tools and the properties tools. Uh, we won't be going through each one, but I will tell you how to get to them uh, for the tool uh, box on the left hand side which is your mesh tools it's the keyboard shortcut t so as you can see t. and for your properties window uh, it is on the right hand side and it's the keyboard shortcut n uh, we will be going through what you could do with these at a later date but for now uh, i'd like to thank you very much for your time and i wish you all a very nice day and i'll see you next time thank you very much bye bye